Today we will be buying a Visa check card anonymously in order to establish a secure connection to an Amazon Cloud computer. Find one of these cards. Anything worth over $5 should be fine for our purposes. And remember, when buying your card, be as discreet as possible. If you were to be tracked back through the cloud, you are only as anonymous as your card. That means that you should have as few links to it as possible. To do this, you should avoid cameras, pay with cash, buy the card someplace that you don't frequent, and wear a disguise. I went through the line dressed as Skeletor just to get a point across, but for practical purposes, you should probably just go with a hoodie and some shades. Now it's time to use the card and get connected to the cloud. In order to surf the web anonymously using Amazon's web services, we first obtained a prepaid debit card from CVS used that anonymously acquired debit card to sign up for Amazon's Elastic Cloud Web Services. As a result of that registration process with Amazon, we obtained two files, the private key file here and the x.509 certificate file here. Those files will be used to identify ourselves to Amazon. Now next we need to obtain from Amazon the tools, that is programs, that we need to control our server in their cloud. So we'll download those. And we'll extract just the tools we need here. And we'll put that in the directory we were just looking at. Okay, got them. Now we've got bin, which is where all these programs that we're going to use live, and we've got other files. Okay, next, we're going to run a batch file that we wrote earlier, which uh, has in it instructions to tell these tools where the tools live and who we are. And those are both done by setting environment variables with names that the tools are expecting to locations, either paths of directories or paths to specific files to accomplish these goals. Okay, after, so now we need to run that, that batch file. So we'll do that from here. And it will show us after it's set the environment variables that it has also tested the Java runtime environment to show that that is working and was properly located. Next, we need to find out what images of operating systems are available on Amazon for us to run in our server. So we'll use one of these tools that we just downloaded. And we're going to tell it that we only want to see images that were provided by ourselves or images that were provided by Amazon. And that list is still going to be rather large, so we're going to filter that list, telling it to look only for Windows images. And we're going to save that in a file, so that if it's large or if we need to reuse it, we'll be able to get at it there. And that file is going to appear in our same directory we've been looking at. Okay, so now we've got that. Next, we're going to generate a key pair using another tool from Amazon, so that's... Uh, EC2 add key pair, and we'll name that key pair 01. And that will produce some output here that we will copy and paste and put into a file. So let's copy that. And we'll paste that into a file. Okay, and we'll save that file as key pair 01. Key pair 0. One and actually we want text. Okay, so now we've saved that. Next, we're going to look at our list of instances that we obtain uh, images that we obtained from Amazon, and we're going to select an image 
we'll just take the very first one. We're going to take this image here. This is, we can see over here, an image of server 2003 that will run on a 32-bit Intel 386 platform, which is what type of server we have signed up for. So the name of that image is here, and we'll copy that to the clipboard so we can put it into our commands. And now we're going to run that image, which will create an instance of a server. So now we're going to use another tool, EC2 run instances, and we'll give it the name of the image that we just copied. And we'll give it our key name, which was key pair 01. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. All right, now we can see over here that the status is pending. Let's see if it has yet finished. We'll do that with a describe instances command. And now we can see that the server is running. So let's get the password from the server for the administrator account. So we'll give it our key pair file and the instance name. And there's our And we'll just do that again, and we'll put the password into a file for later retrieval. Okay, next, we're going to... And now we'll set up the firewall access to allow us to connect. So first we'll uh, get our own address, which we'll do by going to... IP chicken. Okay, now we'll take that address and we'll put it into a firewall rule. So using another EC2 tool from Amazon. Authorize port 3389 for Microsoft Terminal Services. And we'll put in the address for ourselves here. And indicate that it's a single host with slash 32 for those of you who understand that. And now we've got a rule in our firewall. And next, we obtain the domain name of our server in the cloud. Okay, and that is here. And we're going to connect now. We'll do a Microsoft Terminal Services client. And we'll put in the host that we just saw, the domain name that we acquired. Okay. And we're booting Windows, or excuse me, we're logging into Windows. And here comes our desktop. And now we can start a browser in our machine in the cloud. And we can go to Google. And there we are, surfing the web anonymously.